In this chapter, we're going to learn about chemical bonding. Essentially, we're going to look at how atoms can combine uh, with one another. So the first thing that we need to learn is why do atoms need to combine with one another? In a very crude sense, uh, atoms need to combine because they have OCD. What is OCD? OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Behavior. And people with OCD, they need things to be in a particular order, all right, before they can be happy, before uh, they can be stable. All right? And uh, if things are not in the exact way that they want it to be, they will do everything to make sure that it's in that particular order. So what exactly do atoms have OCD about? Uh, is this. Atoms need to have a fully filled outer shell or fully filled valence shell. Alright, so uh, for atoms who have a, a fully filled valence shell, they are stable. Uh, and if you look at the periodic table, elements, atoms of elements in group 0, alright, they will have fully filled valence shell. Now let's do a quick revision of your atomic structure. Okay, so uh, we have learned in atomic structure that um, an atom can be represented in a certain way and from the numbers given we can actually tell uh, the number of protons which is equal to the number of electrons. So if we look at the three uh, elements from group 0, helium has two electrons so the electronic configuration is 2, neon is 2.8 and then argon is 2.8.8. Okay. Again, if you recall the fact that the first shell can only uh, accommodate up to two electrons, you notice that um, helium, neon, and argon, they all have a fully filled valence shell. Okay, helium, and then I'll draw for argon as well. Now once again, um, it's important to keep this in mind that atoms have OCD and they need to have a fully filled valence shell in order to be stable, in order to be happy. All right? So only elements, only atoms of elements in group 0, they have a fully filled valence shell. So we can expect these atoms to be happy on their own. So they don't need to combine with other atoms. All right. So uh, because elements in this group are so special, they are stable, they are unreactive, they are um, given a special name called noble gas or noble gases. Okay. So um, which also brings us to another terminology when an electronic configuration has a fully filled valence shell, we call it a noble gas electronic configuration. Now we have seen that atoms of elements in group 0, they are happy, they are stable. How about atoms, from, uh, how about atoms of elements from other groups? Uh, let's take a look at them now. So if we look at uh, sodium, sodium has 11 electrons, the electronic configuration would be 2, 8 and 1. Okay. Magnesium 2, 8 and 2. Aluminium 2, 8 and 3. So if we look at the electronic configurations of the three elements that um, do they have a fully filled valence shell? The answer is no. So are they stable? The answer is also no. Alright, and since atoms have OCD, they would want to do all they can in order to have a fully filled valence shell. Alright, so if we look at sodium, um, in order to have a fully filled valence shell, there are two things that it can do. It can either lose one electron, it loses the valence electron, or it can gain seven more electrons. All right, and which one would involve, or which one would be easier? Would it be easier to lose an electron or to gain seven more electrons? The answer is, it is easier to lose one electron. Okay, when it loses one electron, the electronic configuration becomes 2.8 and now it is stable. Alright, 
Now, when sodium atom loses one electron, and bear in mind that electron is negatively charged. So when sodium loses one unit of negative charge, what would it become? All right. When sodium atom loses something that's negatively charged, it will become positively charged. All right. So Na atom will become Na plus. Okay, let's take a look at magnesium now. Magnesium has a configuration of 282. All right, it's not stable. It's going to do whatever it can to become stable. So it's easier for magnesium to actually just lose two electrons. And again, it would have uh, the configuration of 2.8 and then now it's stable. Okay, once again, magnesium has lost electrons. Electrons are negatively charged, so magnesium atom will now become positively charged. And since it loses two units of negative charge, it will acquire a charge of 2 plus. The same will apply to aluminium. Aluminium uh, atom would want to lose three electrons. When it loses three electrons, it acquires a fully filled uh, noble gas electronic configuration. And since it loses electrons which are negatively charged, it will become positively charged. And by losing three units of negative charge, it will acquire three units of positive charge. Now, take note that sodium, magnesium, and aluminium, they are actually found in group one, group two, and group three of the periodic table respectively. So what it means is that these three elements they are actually metals okay and so what can we infer from this is that metal atoms metal atoms they tend to lose electrons to gain or to achieve a noble gas electronic electronic configuration okay and then when metal atom lose electrons, they form positively charged uh, ions. Okay, so um, when atoms lose or gain electrons, they form charged particles, and these charged particles are called ions. And uh, metal atoms tend to lose electrons, so they form positively charged ions. And these ions are given a special name, they are called cations. Okay, so metal atoms, they tend to lose electrons to achieve stability. And when they lose electrons, they form cations. Now we'll look at atoms of elements from group 4 to group 7. Essentially, group 4 to group 7, these elements are your non-metals. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens to non-metal atoms. Once again, I will quickly write down the electronic configuration for the four atoms shown. Okay, and if we look at the uh, number of electrons in the valence shell, we can tell that they are not fully filled, so they are not happy. Okay, so for carbon, in order for carbon to have a fully filled valence shell, um, it will need to either lose the four valence electrons or gain four more electrons. Both are possible, but usually um, carbon atoms have a higher tendency to gain four electrons. Now when carbon atom gains four electrons, now it would have a fully filled valence shell, so it's stable. All right, and since carbon atom has gained something that's negative, it will have a negative charge or so. All right, and having gained four electrons, meaning four units of negative charge, it would have a charge of four minus. Now for nitrogen, um, nitrogen has five valence electrons, so in order for it to be stable, um, it's easier for it to just gain three more electrons. And by gaining three more electrons, now it would have a fully filled valence shell. And by gaining three units of negative charge, it will acquire a charge of 3 minus. 
Similarly, for oxygen, it needs to gain two more electrons um, to have a fully filled valence shell. And by gaining two electrons, by gaining two units of negative charge, it will form an ion of O2 minus. And lastly, for fluorine, fluorine needs to just gain one more electron to become stable. And when it gains one electron, when it gains one unit of negative charge, it would form a fluoride ion, F minus. Okay, so what we have seen here is this, that non-metal atoms, they tend to gain electrons to achieve a noble gas electronic configuration. Okay, and when they gain electrons, um, since they are gaining something that's negatively charged, they will become, uh, they will form negatively charged ions also. And um, negatively charged ions are also given a special name, they are called N ions. So uh, let's do a very quick recap. So non metal atoms, they tend to gain electrons. Right, or they need to gain electrons to achieve noble gas electronic configuration and when they do so, they form negatively charged ions called anions. Okay, this is what we have seen so far. We have seen that metal atoms, they tend to lose electrons and when they lose electrons, they form cations. Non-metal atoms, they tend to gain electrons and when they gain electrons, um, they form anions. All right. Now, uh, the next thing that we need to look at is the relation between the group number and the number of electrons they need to lose or gain, as well as the charge on the uh, ions that they form. So very broadly, metal atoms, they tend to form positively charged ions, which is cations. Non-metal atoms, they tend to form negatively charged ions called anions. Okay, if the element, uh, if the atom is in group 1, they tend to lose the group number of electrons. So group 1 will lose 1, group 2 will lose 2 electrons, group 3 will lose 3 electrons. Alright, and the number of electrons or the group number actually corresponds to the charge on the ion. As for non-metals, uh, they tend to gain 8 minus the group number of electrons. What do I mean by that? So group 4, they tend to gain 8 minus 4, which is 4 electrons. Group 5, they tend to gain 8 minus 5, which is 3 electrons. Group 6, 8 minus 6, so group 6 atoms will gain 2 electrons. And group 7 atoms, they tend to gain 8 minus 7. Um, that means one electron. Okay, and similarly, the charge on the anion will correspond to eight minus the group number, meaning group four will form an ion of four minus, group five will form an ion of three minus, group six, two minus, and group seven minus. Okay, so the important thing to take note over here is that. Um, the group number actually tells us the number of electrons the atom needs to gain or lose to achieve a noble gas electronic configuration. And this term is actually given a special name. It is called valency. Okay, valency means the number of electrons um, that an atom needs to gain. lose or later we will see they can even share electrons as well to achieve noble gas configuration okay so this is the new term over here valency stands for the number of electrons an atom needs to gain lose or share to achieve noble gas configuration to achieve stability now, um, so we have seen that atoms in most groups, they are not stable. They don't have a fully filled valence shell and they will do 
everything it takes to become stable. All right. So this is what uh, can possibly happen when different atoms meet each other. Okay, we can have two scenarios. We can have a metal meeting a non-metal. All right. So when a metal atom meets a non-metal atom, what can possibly happen? If you can recall, metal atoms they tend to lose electrons. Okay. And non-metal atoms they tend to gain electrons. So what happens when a metal uh, atom meets a non-metal atom is this: the metal atom will simply transfer, all right, transfer the electrons to the non-metal atoms, and by doing so, both of them will achieve a noble gas electronic configuration. Okay. Now, when a metal atom transfers its electrons to the non-metal, the metal atom will gain, uh, will become positively charged. The non-metal atom will gain a negative charge. All right. So essentially, they form ions. Now this kind of bonding is given the name ionic bonding. Okay, so when a metal atom meets a non-metal atom, it actually forms an ionic bond, which we will learn more in the um, later part. Okay, the second scenario is this: a non-metal atom meets another non-metal atom. Now let's recap. Non-metal atoms they tend to gain electrons. They need more electrons in order to become stable. So when two non-metal atoms meet each other, both needs electrons. Both needs electrons. Both doesn't want to give electrons. So what do they do to become happy? Now they have to learn to share electrons. All right. So. Non-metal atoms they actually share electrons, and by sharing electrons, the electrons that are shared now belongs to both atoms. Okay, so they gain the required number of uh, electrons to have a fully filled valence shell, and then they are happy. All right, so this kind of bonding is called covalent bonding. Okay. So um, those of you who are slightly more alert will know that eh, we seem to have missed out one particular combination. What happens when a metal atom meets another metal atom? Now, since metal atoms only want to lose electrons, okay, they don't want to gain. If two metal atoms come together, both only wants to lose electrons and no one wants to gain, what can possibly happen? The answer is nothing. Right. If two atoms only wants to give electrons, nobody wants to gain. So the two metal atoms will not undergo any combination. They will not undergo any bonding. Right. So essentially, um, the two main types of bonds that we will learn, or the two main kind, two main types of bonding that we will learn in this chapter is ionic bonding when a metal meets a non-metal, and covalent bonding where two non-metal atoms meet each other.